Welcome back. You're diving deep into some new AMOC research today. Okay. Specifically, a study in science advances that uses the Community Earth System Model, mm -hmm. or CESM, to model a potential AMOC collapse. Yeah. We're going to examine what makes this research unique okay. and discuss the practical aspects of their findings. Sounds good. You know, um, this study is really noteworthy. Oh, yeah. Because it's the first time a complete AMOC shutdown has been simulated. Ooh. using a complex model like the CESM. Interesting. Previous studies using simpler models kind of hinted at this possibility. Hmm. But this research adds more weight to the theory of AMOC tipping points and potential collapse. So this really dives deeper into those theories. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So in their simulation, the researchers used something called a hosing experiment. Hmm. They slowly added fresh water to the North Atlantic over a long period uh -huh. to mimic what could happen with increased ice sheet melting. Okay. What's interesting is that the model showed an abrupt AMOC collapse. Wow. Even with this gradual freshwater forcing. So even with a slow change, there could be a sudden shift. Yeah, exactly. Like concerning. The fact that the AMOC collapsed after 1,750 years of simulated gradual forcing okay. is a key takeaway here. Mm -hmm. It suggests the system might have a tipping point beyond which even incremental changes yeah. can trigger a sudden shift. That makes sense. And this is the first time this kind of collapse has been modeled in a GCM like CESM. So a big step forward in our understanding then. Definitely. Okay. The study doesn't just simulate the collapse though. It also examines what happens afterward. Right. And the picture it paints is pretty dramatic. Oh. The simulation showed some areas of Europe could experience temperature drops of five to 15 degrees Celsius after the AMOC shuts down. Wow, that's huge. Yeah, that's a massive change. Definitely. The temperature shifts are significant mm -hmm. and create a seesaw effect Okay. with the northern hemisphere cooling uh -huh. while the southern hemisphere warms. Uh. The simulation also showed a southward shift oh. of the intertropical convergence zone, okay. or ITCZ. Yeah, I'm familiar with that. This could disrupt rainfall patterns and okay. ecosystems like the Amazon rainforest. Right. Which is already under pressure from other factors. So another layer of stress on an already vulnerable system. Got it. Got it. The researchers also discovered a potential early warning signal in their simulation. Oh, really? They call it the FAVES minimum, which is the minimum freshwater transport by the AMOC at 34 degrees south. Mm -hmm. This FAVES minimum appeared about 25 years before the full AMOC collapse in their model. So a potential heads up if we can track it. That's the idea. Interesting. The FAVES minimum is directly related to the strength of the salt advection feedback. Right. As the FAVES declines, it indicates a weakening of this feedback loop, mm -hmm. which is crucial for AMOC stability. Makes sense. This is potentially very useful because it could give us a heads up yeah. if the real world AMOC is approaching a tipping point. So a way to potentially anticipate these changes, That's, that would be huge. And what's even more interesting is that when the researchers analyzed real world observational data, okay. they found that the FAVES is already declining. Mm, is that right? This suggests that the trend towards a potential AMOC tipping point might already be underway, oh. which aligns with the model's predictions. That's concerning. The limited observational data we have does show a decline in the FAVES. Mm -hmm. It's not conclusive proof, right? but it does support the idea that we need to closely monitor this signal. Absolutely. We need more data to confirm this trend. Exactly. Okay. This is where ongoing monitoring of the AMOC at 34 degrees south via the SAMBE array becomes crucial. Yeah, the Sambia array could be key here. It could be our window into the AMOC's future stability. Definitely a valuable tool for understanding what's happening. So while the research presents some concerning possibilities, mm -hmm. it also offers a potential solution in the form of this early warning signal. The FAVES minimum gives us something tangible to track in the real world. Right. And could provide valuable time to prepare for a potential AM3 collapse. That preparation time could be crucial. The study's findings reinforce the need for continuous monitoring of the AMC, yeah. especially at 34 degrees south. Mm -hmm. The Sambia array is a valuable tool for this purpose. Definitely. And its data could be crucial in the coming years to assess the AMC's stability right. and potential for collapse. So we need to keep a close eye on what the data is telling us. Exactly. Okay. However, it's important to remember that climate models are not perfect representations of reality. That's true. And this study acknowledges that. Okay. The researchers point out 
that the simulated AMC collapse in the CESM mm -hmm. might have occurred at a higher freshwater forcing level okay. than what might actually happen in the real world. So the model might be overly sensitive to freshwater input. Yeah, that's one possibility. Mm. That's right. The researchers acknowledge that biases in climate models, particularly related to freshwater fluxes, could mean that the simulated collapse okay. occurred under more extreme conditions uh -huh. than what we might experience. Yeah, we're staying. This doesn't invalidate the findings. No, of course not. But it does emphasize the need for continued research to refine these models. Absolutely. We need to keep improving those models. And get a clearer picture of the AMOC's future. So more work to be done to refine those projections. Exactly. Yeah. So while this research adds to our understanding of the AMOC's potential for collapse, mm. it also highlights the need for more research yeah. to better define the timing and specific triggers right. for such an event in the real world. So still some unanswered questions, but a good step forward. Exactly. Got it. The study also delves into the potential climate impacts of an AMOC collapse beyond just temperature changes. Their simulation showed a distinct seesaw pattern with the northern hemisphere cooling and the southern hemisphere warming. What's interesting is the difference in regional impacts. Mm. You mentioned Europe could see some drastic temperature drops. But what about other areas? What kind of regional variations did the model show? The model projected the most intense cooling in the North Atlantic region, especially Europe, with decreases of 5 to 15 degrees Celsius. But the cooling extended to North America and Asia as well, albeit less dramatically. In the Southern Hemisphere, the warming was more evenly distributed with higher latitudes experiencing greater warming. So a collapse wouldn't just shift global average temperatures. It would completely rearrange regional climates with potentially significant consequences for ecosystems and human societies. Exactly. The study specifically pointed to the potential impact on the Amazon rainforest. We already know deforestation and climate change are putting pressure on this ecosystem, but an AMOC collapse could exacerbate these threats. The southward shift of the intertropical convergence zone you mentioned earlier that would directly impact the Amazon. How would this shift alter the rainforest climate? The shift in the ITCZ would disrupt the Amazon's rainfall patterns, potentially leading to longer and more severe dry seasons. This would increase the risk of wildfires, tree mortality, and overall ecosystem degradation, pushing the rainforest closer to a tipping point of its own. The Amazon is often called the lungs of the planet because of its role in absorbing carbon dioxide. A shift to a drier ecosystem could release massive amounts of carbon back into the atmosphere, further accelerating climate change. It's a concerning feedback loop that highlights the interconnectedness of the climate system. An AMOC collapse wouldn't just impact the ocean. It could have cascading effects on terrestrial ecosystems as well, with potentially global consequences. The study focused primarily on the impacts of a complete AMOC shutdown. But is there a chance that the AMOC might weaken gradually instead of collapsing outright? What would be the implications of a slower decline? A gradual weakening of the AMOC is a possibility, and it's something we need to consider as well. While complete collapse would trigger more immediate and dramatic changes, a gradual weakening would still have significant consequences over time. So even if the AOC doesn't shut down abruptly, we should be concerned about any signs of decline. Absolutely. A weakened AMOC would still disrupt heat transport, nutrient distribution, and oxygen levels in the Atlantic Ocean, leading to cascading effects on marine ecosystems, weather patterns, and coastal communities. The impacts might be less severe and unfold more slowly, but they would still be significant. This raises the question of what we can do to prevent or at least delay an AMOC collapse. The study emphasizes the role of freshwater forcing as a key driver of instability. So, is reducing greenhouse gas emissions the primary solution? Reducing greenhouse gas emissions is absolutely crucial. By slowing down global warming, we can reduce the rate of ice melt and lessen the freshwater forcing on the AMOC. This could potentially delay or even prevent a collapse. However, given the AMOC's complexity and the potential for tipping points, adaptation strategies are also essential. What kind of adaptation measures would be needed to prepare for the impacts of weakened or collapsed AMOC? Adaptation strategies need to be tailored to the specific impacts projected for different regions. Coastal communities would need to focus on sea level rise adaptation, such as building seawalls and relocating infrastructure. Agricultural regions would need to adapt to changes in temperature and precipitation patterns by adopting drought-resistant crops and improving irrigation systems. So it's not just about mitigating climate change, it's also about preparing for the changes that are already underway and those that are likely to occur in the future. Exactly. We need a two-pronged approach focusing on both 
reducing emissions to prevent the worst case scenarios, and adapting to the changes that are already happening or are unavoidable. The study also touched on the limitations of climate models, acknowledging that the simulated AMOC collapse might have occurred at a higher freshwater forcing level than what might happen in reality. Ah. Can you elaborate on the reasons behind this discrepancy? One factor is the model's representation of precipitation patterns. The CESM used in this study, like many climate models, exhibits biases in its simulation of precipitation. This could lead to an inaccurate representation of freshwater fluxes into the ocean, potentially skewing the results. So the model might not be capturing the full complexity of how freshwater is distributed and transported within the global ocean system. Precisely. And this can affect the model's simulation of the salt advection feedback, which, as we discussed, is crucial for determining the AMOC's stability. The model might be overestimating the sensitivity of the AMOC to freshwater forcing. Another factor mentioned was the model's resolution. How does the resolution of a climate model impact its ability to simulate a complex system like the AMOC? Climate models divide the Earth's surface and atmosphere into a grid of cells, and the size of these cells determines the model's resolution. A higher resolution model with smaller grid cells can capture finer scale processes more accurately. So a model with a coarser resolution might miss some of the subtle details that influence the AMO's behavior. Exactly. And the CESM, while a sophisticated model, has a relatively coarse resolution compared to some newer models. This means it might not be fully capturing the intricate dynamics of the AMOC and its response to freshwater forcing. So while the CESM's findings are valuable, they need to be interpreted with caution considering these limitations. Yes, it's essential to recognize that climate models are constantly being improved. As we gain a better understanding of complex climate processes and computational power increases, we can develop models with higher resolution and more realistic representations of Earth's systems. This ongoing refinement of climate models is crucial for providing more accurate projections of future climate scenarios and informing decision making. Absolutely. By acknowledging the limitations of current models and continuously working to improve them, we can enhance our understanding of the climate system and develop more effective strategies for mitigation and adaptation. It's worth noting that this study uses a specific climate model, okay. CESM-1, mm. to run these simulations. Right. Um, it's important to remember that while CESM-1 is complex and it's widely used, yeah. it does have its limitations. The researchers themselves acknowledged that the AMOC collapse in their simulation might have happened with a higher level of freshwater forcing than what's realistic. What are some of the reasons for this discrepancy between the model and reality? Well, one factor is the model's representation of freshwater processes. Uh, the CESM-1 model, mm -hmm. like many others, tends to underestimate the transport of freshwater from the Atlantic to other ocean basins. Mm -hmm. And this could lead to an overestimation of freshwater buildup in the North Atlantic, okay. potentially making the simulated AMOC more sensitive to collapse. So the model might not be fully capturing the intricate balance of freshwater fluxes within the global ocean system. Precisely. Another limitation mentioned was the model's resolution. How does the resolution of a climate model impact its ability to simulate a complex system like the AMOC? Climate models divide the Earth's surface and atmosphere into a grid of cells. Okay. And the size of these cells determines the model's resolution. So a higher resolution model with smaller grid cells can better represent the fine scale processes that influence the AMOC. So a model with a coarser resolution might miss some of the subtle details that influence the AMOC's behavior. Exactly. Okay. And CSM-1, mm -hmm. while sophisticated, has a relatively coarse resolution. Got it. Which means it might not capture all the nuances of how the AMOC responds to freshwater forcing. So the findings of this study are valuable, but need to be interpreted within the context of these model limitations. Exactly. This study focused on a specific scenario of complete AMC collapse. Right. But what if the AMOC weakens gradually instead of shutting down abruptly? Yeah. What kind of impacts could we expect in that case? A gradual weakening of the AMOC would likely lead to a more subtle onset of impacts. Hmm. The changes would unfold over a longer period, right. but the consequences would still be significant. So even a slower decline in the AMOC's strength would require adaptation measures. Absolutely. This research underscores the importance of long-term monitoring and early detection of AMOC changes. Mm -hmm. Are there any specific monitoring efforts or technologies that are particularly promising? 
The Sambier array, which measures the AMOC at 34 degrees south, is a crucial tool for tracking the FAVS minimum identified in this study. Okay. Expanding this array and incorporating new sensor technologies could enhance our ability to detect subtle changes in the AMOC's behavior. This research serves as a reminder that climate change is not just an environmental issue. Right. It has profound social, economic, and ethical implications as well. The potential collapse of the AMOC would disproportionately impact vulnerable communities in developing countries. Absolutely. Raising questions of equity and justice in our response to climate change. We need to ensure that adaptation strategies are inclusive and prioritize the needs of those who are most at risk. Absolutely. This research highlights the importance of individual action as well. Every decision we make regarding our consumption patterns, transportation choices, and support for sustainable practices can contribute to mitigating climate change. Collective action is also crucial. Yeah. We need to engage in our communities, support organizations working on climate solutions, and hold our leaders accountable for implementing effective climate policies. This research on the AMC provides a sobering assessment of the risks we face. Yeah. But it also offers a glimmer of hope. We have the knowledge and the tools to mitigate climate change and build a more sustainable future. The future of our planet depends on our collective understanding and action. Let's choose wisely. Thank you for joining us on this deep dive into the world of the AMOC. We hope this episode has provided you with valuable insights into this crucial component of our planet's climate system and the urgent need for action. Remember, even small changes can have a ripple effect. Stay informed, stay engaged, and continue exploring the fascinating world of science and its implications for our future.